call the October 25th, 2016 Shelburne Select Board meeting to order. Welcome everyone. Hello. Usually you don't get these many people, except if it's a dog, leash ordinance, or something important like that. So, uh, welcome. Our first item, which is why I'm guessing almost all of you are here, is the Bay Road Pedestrian Bicycle Mobility Study Local Concerns Meeting. The way we're going to run this portion of the meeting is we have John Dempsey from a tool design group who's going to give a presentation. And when he's finished, we'll have any comments that the select board might have and then or questions we might have that John might be in a position to answer. Then I'm going to give everyone here an opportunity to speak if you wish. We'll ask everyone to please be succinct if possible. But everyone will have an opportunity to speak. As a matter of fact, we're trying to put so, uh, someone on the phone right now. And uh, it's obviously not working very well, but we're doing the best we can. There's a lot of pressure on us. So uh, first, I'll like to turn it over to John. And John, please uh, take it away. Great. Thanks, Gary. Um, like you mentioned, I'm John Dempsey with uh, Tool Design Group, and we uh, specialize in bicycle and pedestrian planning across New England. Joe And we were, uh, were teamed with CCRPC and the town of Shelburne and Hartman Associates to conduct a mobility study for Bay Road. Here's a brief agenda of what we're going to cover. Um, I'll give you a nice project background of where we are today. Uh, basically, review our existing conditions analysis that we conducted. Uh, talk about the schedule and next steps, and then, like Gary mentioned, we're going to open up the comments and discussion for you folks. So, as I mentioned, this is a collaborative process with uh, CCRPC, the Town of Shelburne, Tool Design Group, my firm, and then Hartigan Arche Archaeological Associates. Um, and we also are forming a project steering committee, which involves some of the bike pad community um, folks with the Town of Shelburne, and as well as other folks uh, in the town to kind of conduct review what we've done so far, make sure we're on the right path, make, we're, make sure we're not missing anything. So specifically, <coughs> Town of Shelburne, with the assistance of the Chicken County, County Regional Planning Commission, is conducting a scoping study um, along the Bay Road Corridor. Specifically, uh, what scoping means is basically the phase in project development process that moves from identifying or recognizing a problem and then uh, generating idea through development of alternatives and kind of monitoring any environmental impacts from those studies. Thanks. Is that better? Okay. He's trying to, trying to tell you. I'm sorry. Okay. You need to speak into the mic because we have okay. two and a half million people watching. Yeah, <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> So the project study area is on the screen right now. It's approximately 1.7 miles long. Uh, the western terminus is Harbor Road, and to the east is Shelburne Road, or US Route 7. Here are some general roadway characteristics of Bay Road. It's classified as an urban collector. It's under the jurisdiction of the town. Right-of-way width is 66 feet. The current roadway width is 24 feet, which includes a travel lane in each direction of 12 feet. I want to point out that it is not currently meeting Vermont state design standards. Uh, Vermont calls for 11 foot travel lanes with a three foot shoulder to accommodate bicycle traffic. And 2012, the AADT was 2,500 vehicles and the posted speed limit, which probably many of you know is 35 miles an hour. So here's just a more detailed zoom in of a typical kind of cross section of Bay Road. So you can see uh, various utilities pepper the corridor. You have hydrants, utility poles, as well as subsurface utilities, and then also kind of uh, natural topography, rolling vegetation. Here's a graphic illustration of a typical cross section. So like I mentioned, the 24 foot roadway uh, includes two 12 foot travel lanes. And then the right of way of 66 feet. Um, I also want to point out that basically the lack of the shoulder, as I mentioned before, doesn't meet Vermont state standards. However, given, uh, given kind of the rural nature, the natural resources in the corridor and utility impacts, 
Uh, widening the roadway would be very costly and likely not feasible from a town perspective. Um, so as we start to develop alternatives for the corridor, I think we should, um, should be open to that and keep that in the back of our mind. This was an interesting infographic from a recent study that kind of uh, broke down four types of uh, cyclists in the US. So the first category is strong and fearless, and this represents approximately 7% of the cycling community. And they are more likely the spandex clad will ride any road, anywhere. The next, the next category is enthusiastic and confident. closer to the speaker, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I cannot hear. Okay, Linda, okay. we'll do, this is Gary Von Stange, we'll do the best we can, but it's very difficult uh, to include this uh, phone. I just faced it towards the speaker. I might have hung up on you. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll, I'll continue. Yes, please. The next category of cyclists is the enthusiastic and confident, and these generally will ride most types of streets. Um, however, uncomfortable situations, uh, maybe a constrained roadway, um, they may not feel comfortable riding their bicycle. The next and largest category is 51%, which is the interested and yet concerned. And this is really the type of uh, cyclists we're looking to capture with some of these mobility studies. Basically, they require specific uh, infrastructure to feel comfortable. So this might be a family with young children, someone who doesn't feel confident on a uh, two-wheeled bike, so maybe a trike. Um, and the last group is the, the no way, no how, and just not able and uninterested group of cyclists. And that represents 37% um, of the cycling community. Wow. Oops. So what's that last group? So I think I'm going to keep plugging along and maybe yes. we'll kind of, yeah, address questions at the end here. That'd be Is great. that okay? Okay. So continuing along the corridor, we have two bridge structures. I'll kind of run through this pretty quick. The La Platte River Bridge, uh, 1948 was constructed. It's basically on a two year uh, inspection frequency with the Vermont Agency of Transportation. And these results are submitted to FHWA or the Federal Highway Administration. The last, last known bridge inspection we could find was July 2016. This was given a uh, FSR or federal sufficiency rating of 40.6 out of 100. And I just want to note that 50% um, or less is needed to qualify for federal replacement funds. And also that the bridge is 24 feet wide, which um, does not meet the Vermont state standards. However, um, during our reconnaissance and kickoff meeting, it, it was pointed out that the guardrails, guardrails are scheduled for replacement this year. Um, so that is a plus. The next bridge moving west to east is the Vermont Ra Railway Bridge. This was constructed in 1912. Basically, it's, uh, the bridge inspection is under the responsibility of the railroad operator. Last known uh, inspection was 2015 in November. Uh, on a numerical rating scale of one to nine, it was given a four, which denotes serious deterioration. And these bridge requirements must meet federal compliance and standards. And again, this, the underpass width is approximately 21 to 22 feet. And again, it does not meet the Vermont um, state standards. So specifically, the purpose and need, why are we conducting this study? It's to evaluate and identify walking and bicycling alternatives uh, for developing a safe route on Bay Road for the approximate 1.7 miles of the study area. More specifically, it's needed to create a preferred alternative for walking and biking on Bay Road that, not, that connects existing paths uh, with destinations along the corridor. We're also interested in maximizing safety for all users of the corridor. We understand that it's getting a lot of uses from varying um, <coughs> travel transportation, so it's important to keep all these in mind as we develop alternatives. This will also support future walking and biking connections within the town. And also, hopefully after all this is said and done, it provides a preferred alternative um, with construction costs, basically serve as an um, application for the town to use for grant cycles that come up for funding for impl implementation. The next few slides are going to kind of discuss the existing natural resources that we found along the corridor. So the first one are the lakes, ponds, streams, and rivers. So it's pretty kind of obvious. Shelburne Bay is on the north side of the site. 
You have the Platte River feeding into it on the south, um, and also the Monroe Brook kind of to the northeast quadrant of the study area. I also want to point out the impaired watershed um, is associated with the Monroe Brook. So it's being monitored by uh, a and and the state of Vermont to kind of limit um, future pollutants. The next natural resources category are the wetlands and hydric soils. The class two wetlands and the wetland advisory layer are overlaid in the dark and light, gr uh, light green. Um, any, any wetland over half an acre is protected by the state and is also associated with a 50 foot buffer. So any kind of recommendation in this area, we need to take that into account. And also the hydric soils are pointed out as they are naturally kind of saturated and are prone to um, flooding. Here's the uh, display of the agricultural lands overlaid on the project study area. Um, as you can see, most of it was at one point kind of vibrant um, agricultural land. But as you know, most of it has been disturbed and the likelihood of um, going back to agricultural farming is kind of uh, not likely. So, because um, most of it is, is pre-disturbed pre and residential has kind of come in and been developed. The overlay of the flood hazard areas is the orange, and this is basically a 1% chance of annual flooding within the project study area. And no surprise there, it's basically along the La Platte River and uh, the shoreline of Shelburne Bay and um, Lake Champlain. The rare, threatened, and endangered species are overlaid on the project area. Again, no real surprise here. Um, the purple is the threatened or endangered. And the teal kind of hatch pattern is the rare. Um, while a and doesn't specifically identify species conducted uh, when they find these, find these species, it's recommended moving forward with any alternative that a comprehensive um, study be conducted to specifically identify any, any endangered or, or threatened species within the project study area. Also associated are public and uh, conservation lands. To the north, you have Shelburne Bay Park, and to the south, you have the conservation land of the Pla La Platte River. Um, the, feds, the feds have specific guidelines and um, requirements and, and use specific needs that can happen within, this, within these lands. So obviously, moving forward, we'd have to identify and kind of work with those guidelines um, any, with any alternatives generated. Uh, lastly, these are the underground utilities. Apologies, they're kind of hard to see, but it you know, ranges from Vermont gas, water line, storm sewer, and um, regular sewer lines. The one that's consistent is the water line that runs the entire length of the corridor and kind of switches sides um, approximately halfway. But you know, any alternative would have to take those into account as well. Some preliminary um, research has been done on the historic preservation. Um, Harkin is still conducting their study, so these are kind of the initial kind of first pass. On a historic preservation standpoint, uh, potential impacts may be landscape features or historic plantings. From an archaeological standpoint, um, it's determined moderate to high pre-contact deposits and low to moderate historic deposits. And from historic preservation, Again, just potential impacts to landscape or historic plantings that may be associated with historic features. So more specifically, when we conducted our comprehensive uh, site analysis, here are some of the corridor issues that we identified. We'd love to hear others if folks have some. So basically, we observed vehicular, um, high vehicular traffic speeds, um, well over 35 miles an hour documented. The presence of travel trailers, boat trailers, and heavy equipment, which makes sense because you have access to the boat launch ramp through Shelburne Bay Park. The bridge structures, like I mentioned before, are uh, a huge kind of pinch point throughout the corridor. Numerous uh, utility poles, hydrants, and underground lines uh, pepper the corridor. Topography, visibility, which includes sight lines for all users uh, through horizontal and the vertical curvature of the roadway as well as natural features, which are the kind of, we identified as ledge outcrops and rivers and streams, and also just vegetation throughout the corridor. So along with the constraints, we also identified opportunities. Bay Road is specifically identified as a desired route for pedestrian and bicycle travel. 
in the Shelburne Comprehensive Plan uh, from 2014, and as late as the Chittenden County Active Trans Transportation Plan, which is kind of ongoing and uh, 2016 study. It's our understanding that it is a known destination for walking and biking for users accessing Shelburne Farms or the Thai Hall Recreation Path or walking to school through various routes. Um, we feel this is a really strong opportunity to make those uh, make a, existing connections with what's already through uh, your pedestrian and bicycle network today. So where are we? Uh, like I said, we had a kickoff meeting in August. We're conducting the local concerns meeting tonight. Um, we'll take all the feedback from this meeting and we'll come back up in March and present our concept alternatives. After that meeting, we'll hopefully have a preferred alternative for the corridor. And then, like I said, we'll wrap up with a final report in May um, that you can use at your will to go after funding for implementation. So those are the main slides I had. Um, I guess if you guys want to start with questions or comments, and then we can move, move on from there. Uh, thank you, uh, John. Does anyone on the board have uh, any questions or comments for John? No, I'm good for right now. You're good? You're good? Can, good yeah. can you tell us how long the study's been going on? So we kicked off in August, um, so that's like a four-month cycle so far. Or sorry, no, three months, sorry. Okay, now we're going to open this up to everyone here. I understand that there are some uh, disagreements among people. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone <coughs> that we're all neighbors. It's fine to disagree with someone. I ask that you all please be civil. And all your comments pursuant to our rules of procedure are directed to the board. If someone says something and you disagree with them, please do not address them. Please direct it to the board. That's a way we uh, maintain civility. So can I see a raise of hands? Uh, how many people would like to speak this evening? Can I raise my hand? Yep, Linda. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think there's about 10 or 11 uh, people. So we'll stick with our normal rules of procedure, which provides up to three minutes for any one person. Uh, so who would like to go first? Yeah. Sir, and one of the things we ask everyone to do is to please uh, come up to the microphone, speak into the microphone, and first, identify yourself. Hi, I'm Pike Porter. Yeah. And I wanted to go first because my son wants to leave. <laughs> he wants to watch the World Series, doesn't he? He wants to get out of here. But um, I want to thank you for uh, implementing this study. Um, I'm a frequent user of the road and a frequent visitor of my father-in-law who lives on Bay Road. Um, and we didn't know this was, was going to happen until we saw the stop signs go up, and it's been great. Um, we're, we feel a lot more safe along the road. Um, uh, Paul lives um, actually right next to the bridge, um, and sometimes before the, the stop, lights, stop signs went in, we uh, were scared to make left turns out of the driveway uh, because uh, the, uh, as the uh, conductor, the, the um, research study indicated people travel this uh, road much more quickly than the, the signs um, uh, allow. Um, so it's just a lot safer for us uh, and f as a biker and uh, someone who kayaks down there and uses Thai Hall Path on occasion. It's just nice to be able to feel a little more comfortable walking down uh, Bay Road. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, who's next? Well, we're done. <laughs> uh, please. Excuse me one second. Mark, do you, by any chance, do you have a quorum of your board here? Uh, we're warned. You're warned? We are, but I, don't, I think I don't see any. So I don't, oh, if I you do have a quorum, good. let yeah. me know so I'll give you time to call your meeting to order. Yeah, thank you. I don't think we have Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Jeff Zwaver. I live at uh, 49 Bayview Lane, which is a block off of Bay Road. Um, and my wife and two kids, we frequently go for a, a walk and boat work. We have a little subdivision that's just, you know, three, three streets and we feel like, like a ping pong ball, just kind of walking back over the same path. And we live a 10 minute walk from the Bay Road Park. So um, 
or the Shelburne Bay Park on the south end of the bay there by the boat launch, and we'd love to get down there, but we can't. So if you want to get, get down there, we load the kids up in the car, and then once we're in the car, we're like, well, we might as well just go to Costco. And, you know, everybody knows that's a lot more fun than going for a walk at the park. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It, it, it's so close, yet we, we just can't get there, and I think a lot of people share the same thing. Thank you. So, who's next? I'm on the phone. Linda, why don't you go? This is Linda Lavalette. Hi, uh, yes, Linda Lavalette. I have lived on Bay Road for well over 40 years, and I've walked it, I've biked it, and I have fought writing the Bay Road for 40 years, just about. In 2004, the, the PMO gave up, and they said there's no sense fooling with the road until the railroad underpass has been addressed, because it's a bottleneck. Now, there have been no accidents on Bay Road. It may not be comfortable for everybody when cars are going quickly, but the stop sign hasn't slowed the traffic down. And what I've noticed is the bicyclists don't stop for the stop sign. Over 26% of them don't even use the bike lane, and I can't see, I can't see the, making the motorist stop letting the bicyclists go through. Um, plowing in the winter is going to be a hazard. There's, there's floods in there. When there's water in the underpass, people are going to have to use the lane for walking. No one got hurt when people used their heads and took personal responsibility for looking before they went through the underpass. Now, the one thing that I didn't hear, and I could have missed it, was no one mentioned the property owners on Bay Road. And and Shelburne and the county have put a lot of bike paths and a lot of walking paths, and it costs money. And Bay Road, even if it's only 1.7 miles, it's a narrow old road. Our houses, the people that own property, our houses are close to the road. Anything that's done to widen the road to accommodate bicyclists is going to adversely impact property owners. And I didn't hear anything about the property owners, how close the buildings are to the road, how difficult it is to, to be able to widen it in certain spots. There's a right-of-way issue that's got to be addressed. And when is enough enough? There haven't been any accidents. People that take responsibility for themselves are not getting hurt. They're not even getting spooked. If you wait till there's no traffic, going through that underpass is not a problem. And there haven't been car crashes involving cars under there either. So people have wanted to walk and bike down Bay Road forever, and we have. So the, the other side of the coin is the adverse effect of widening the road, opening up Bay Road and then Harbor Road to a county bike path. Making it part of the network is going to mean we're going to have a horde of biking. Instead of 15 uh, people that were interviewed, you know, do, do you feel safer? Yeah, 15 people in two days, that's not a lot of traffic. But when you have a county bike path on Bay Road, you're going to have 15 and 30 bikers in one group. And you, the people that live on Bay Road, that own property, we're going to lose privacy, we're going to lose the quiet, the whole ambience of the road is going to change. You're going to have people tootling on down there that aren't from Shelburne. And someone has to think about the property owners, the people that live on Bay Road and Harbor Road, and realize that you're going to adversely affect our properties and our lives and the quality of where we live. Thank you, Linda. I, I appreciate it. I'm just going to... Uh give you 10 seconds to sum it up because uh, we're over our time limit here and I'm trying to give everyone an opportunity to speak. Now, there is going to be expensive, there's going to be a fight, and when is enough enough? Thank you, Linda. I uh, just want to remind everyone, this is a local concerns meeting also. This board is not about to make any decisions. We're not even close to making decisions. What we want to do is open it up to hear from people, people on every side of, of this issue. So uh, next, who would like to speak? Please, ma'am, if you please uh, identify yourself, come up to the microphone and sing us a song, that'd be great. I'm Betsy Dempsey, I'm a resident of Bay Road, and I am an avid walker. And that being said, I haven't noticed a problem for myself walking 
down Bay Road. I actually think the stop sign at the bridge has been great. And I would like to make a suggestion, though. I think, I know during the Harvest Festival, it was a big problem. It was really backed up. I wonder why can't the festival organizers be required to just have a police officer or whatever hired somebody to let 20 cars through and then another 20 cars through rather than having it backed up so far. And But as far as the traffic goes, I, I haven't had a problem with the walking, but I do worry about if the road is widened and uh, I, I, I think it would just encourage people to drive faster. So. All right, thank you very much. Oh uh, yeah, Josh. I just wanted to, and it would be worthwhile clarifying the difference between this uh, gathering um, and the item on the agenda about yeah, the stop signs. We do have so people understand later tonight. Uh, we will be having a discussion, and it's uh, listed as a decision item. If you have an agenda, it's item number twelve. It's a, the public hearing for proposed amendments to the parking ordinance which would establish a one lane, one lane alternating traffic condition at the Bay Road underpass. So some of you, your comments are applicable to both now and to that item. So I do want you to know if your comments are geared solely to that item, you might want to wait until that item comes up because that is a decision item. So, would you like to s well, come I up to, just, could, could you just use the mic, please? I'm sorry. And identify yourself. I'm Barbara Jewett Noyes. I live on Bay Road. My husband's been there 40 years. I've been there about 36 years. Um, my question at this point is, it seems rather disingenuous to me to have this meeting when you have most of the people here who use Bay Road every day because we live there or we live on side streets off of Bay Road. And you have the, everybody here for this part, but then you have the agenda item for the underpass, which people are also concerned about, much further down the agenda. Well, this is there are two different things here, and frankly, I don't think it's. Uh, sorry, but I'm going to disagree with you on your characterization of it being disingenuous. Uh, the, the purpose of this meeting is not to be disingenuous. The purpose of this meeting is to provide everyone an opportunity to be heard. We provided notice and now we're giving you the opportunity to be heard. In regard to the item, whether or not we go forward on the change to a specific ordinance, that is something else that has been noticed and has been discussed uh, numerous times uh, before this board and that was part of a six month study, give or take, uh, that we're going to address later. So, you, And you're welcome to stay for that. So this, this, there's no hiding here. There's no disingenuity, if that's a word. <laughs> All right, who's next? Would you like to please take the mic and identify yourself? I'm just, I'm, I, uh, my please. Paul Boisvert. I live in Bay Road. And I brought a few photos. Every day at 3.15, the traffic is stopped in both directions. I'll leave this as evidence. Every day, and it's any special occasion whatsoever, the traffic is backed up. And this relates to your first question about, I walk Bay Road every day with my daughter, right. twice a day. There's lots of grass on the side of the road. Yeah. If you put a sidewalk in or you widen the road, you're gonna add more impervious services to the right next to the lake. You talk about trying to keep pollution out of Lake Champlain, and you're talking about putting more pavement, more cement, instead of the nice grass that is there now. I walk my dog every day down the street twice a day. I'd rather walk on the grass than cement or pavement. There's plenty of room to walk up and down Bay Road. I've lived there for, for 20 years. Never had a problem walking up and down the road. As far as Bay Road, the consequences are giant traffic jams. This happens every day at 3 o'clock. And if there was a fire at my house, the fire department could not get to my home. And uh, I think that the alternative here, there's a great alternative to this. Make the road like it was before with two lanes moving with the stop sign on each end. This way you, you haven't cut the number of the flow of traffic in half, which is what you've done now. You only allow one car at a time to go through there. What if you had a stop sign on both ends and you let cars stop, go through, stop, go through. Cars, two cars could go through at the same time at slow speed because they've already stopped. If someone wants to bike or walk through, 
they're going to be walking next to cars that have stopped and that are moving through. So the speed through the underpass will have been greatly reduced, obviously, with stop signs on both ends, but you will not have cut 50% of the traffic flow okay. off. So Thank an you. alternative is, please, allow two lanes, if you want to keep the stop sign, allow at least two lanes to move constantly so that you don't get this every day. Plus, the other issue for me is, when the wind blows to the north, all these buses and trucks that are idling in front of my home, I can't work in my garden because all the diesel fumes, car fumes are coming in, across and in, right into my garden. Right. And it's, you're making my life miserable. Uh, stop sign. You can have the photos. Okay. I realize that nothing will ever change, though, because once the town sets their mind to something, they never change it. Okay, I'd like to uh, respond to that. Uh, this is not a decision item. I can tell you, I haven't made, made up. I gave you a chance to speak. I'd like to speak okay, now, please. Thank you. I haven't made up my mind. I'm not even close to making up my mind. I doubt very much if anyone on this board is close to making up their mind. We're trying to hear to understand what your concerns are, what your issues are, and there are people on both sides of this issue. We're just trying to figure it out, and frankly, we're trying to provide uh, the person and the group who are doing the study an opportunity to hear from everyone so they can work on this, this plan first, to come up with an idea. Included homeowners, though. This is the well, that's the this is the process: the local concerns meeting, the concept alternatives meeting, a preferred alternative meeting, and then a final report. These are at many, many meetings with, and they, there was a kickoff too. So, who's next? Mark, did you want to go? Oh, I okay. thought I re you raised your hand. Okay, uh, I saw your hand up, Matt. Yes, my name is Julia Ely. Um, I wish it was a great. Uh, this was a great presentation, but when you talked about corridor issues, it's, it, it would have been nice if people had been a corridor issue rather than everything coming in front of us like that, that the study even starts without us knowing anything about it. I don't think that's right. I think it's putting the cart before the, before the horse. I've, uh, did you say something? Oh, I don't know. Sorry. Um, Steve and I have lived on Bay Road for 23 years, and that's how long our study of Bay Road is. And I can, I, we have a big window looking right out at Bay Road, and there is not a broad segment of the general public that has an interest in walking and biking on Bay Road. We see that every day. We know every walker, every bicyclist, and there are not many. And my husband walks to uh, catch the bus, he has no problem at all walking on the grass, just like you said. Everybody, we people walk on our front lawn, we don't care. It's the speed <coughs> that is something, the speed, it, that's the worst thing about Bay Road is that, I, I guess it was uh, 43 miles an hour, but we've seen a lot faster because a lot of the cars being tested up the road think of it <coughs> as a racetrack. So they really, they, get, they go 50, they go 60 sometimes. Um, I guess that's, I have a lot to say, but I don't like speaking in front of a group, so that's Thank it. you. Thank you. Uh, who would else, ma'am, please? And then you're next. <laughs> I'm Ellen McShane, I live on Bay Road also. I've lived there over 20 years, and I like walking on the grass. I do it every day. And I think I see people enjoying the area. I'm curious how you determined it was a four-rod road, uh, because I think that we have a permitted fence that's at a three-rod uh, dimension. And I just it seems like you're going to be taking more property from the property owners with a four-rod road. But I may not know the figures accurately. All right. No, th thank you very much. John, do you know anything about the four-rod? So we, yeah, we work closely with the town to kind of go over those, um, those documents with the administration. And to the best of our knowledge, that's, um, I'm just going to pan ahead to the, the cross section. Um, <coughs> to the best of our ability and knowledge, this, this, is, what, um, this is what the documents offered and said. Um, 
without conducting a full class survey, um, we're still going to be working with this. But I think in the future, maybe if anything does get implemented, I would recommend getting a full um, class survey done on the roadway corridor to verify the right of way conditions. Thank you. Please. Uh, so I'm Susan Dunning. I live on Yacht Haven Drive, um, which in, is part of Bay Colony, so it's off of Bay Road. And uh, there's about 37 or 27 houses in our neighborhood, about 37 kids in our neighborhood. And a lot of us would like to be able to have our kids bike to school, which is going the other way. And none of our kids actually do that. We all drive our kids to school, which increases traffic in the area. So it would be very nice to have some sort of path that would get from our neighborhood just to pick up the Thai Hall path, which is about 1 20th of a mile to get there. Uh, the other thing is a lot of people in our neighborhood uh, walk either to Bay Park to use the trails or else to Shelburne Farms. And again, it's, it's rather dangerous to walk on that part of Bay Road. And so again, we drive there, which seems ridiculous because it's less than, again, a mile uh, long. And uh, we would like to have our kids be able to, you know, bike to town or bike to baseball um, games and, and all of that. And unfortunately, we're sort of locked into this neighborhood that we can't access anything that's in the area because uh, there's really not accessibility in terms of biking or pedestrian. Um, I also just want to read a note from um, one of the people in my neighborhood and... Uh, she says, I'm a pediatrician and my husband, an orthopedic trauma surgeon. We never take our young kids onto or even walk or run ourselves along Bay Road because we know all too well the dangers of walking on a business, busy road without space for pedestrians. Just so you know, many members of our community uh, who support this movement wholeheartedly and might benefit the most can't come out at 6 p.m. due to toddler and bed baby bedtimes. I would be there if I could. Um, so there is a lot of support within our neighborhood and people just can't be here to really speak for that. So, Thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Stephen Bott, if you'd step up and identify yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephen Bott. Uh, I live on 11 Bayfield Drive, which is on the corner of Bay Road and Bayfield Drive. We've been, my wife and I have been property owners there since 2001. Two kids grew up there, dogs. Luckily, none of them have been hit by a car. Um, I'm also a cyclist, and if you've ever been a cyclist and you get clipped in and you're riding down the road, I don't know if you've, anybody cycles and you have your toes clipped in and you got cars going by at 50 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, and you're hugging the edge of the road, and you're trying to stay on the edge and cars are blowing past you, if you go off the edge of the road, you're in the dirt, you're in the gravel, that sort of thing. That's dangerous. This road is dangerous. It's, un it's unsafe to walk on. I don't feel safe with cars going fast down there. I don't think you can, sp you can change the speed limit. We know what happens with that. I think adding three foot barrier for some, for bicyclists or w people walking, it's great for walking. You can walk in the grass as a cyclist. You can't bike in the in the in the grass or the gravel. So I think adding a three foot wide uh, path for cyclists and pedestrians would be a great idea. Um, I think from a health perspective, being a physician, I think it's a great idea. I think if you build it, they will come and you will develop. I think you'll see a lot more bicyclists. You'll see pedestrians. I think people feel safe to use that. It's, it has great health benefits. Um, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks. Sir. Hi, my name is uh, Alex Nalbach. I'm also in the Bay Colony Association, and I am one of the people who's able to be here tonight from the association. So I just wanted to reiterate what Susan had said before. Um, and also what the gentleman who just spoke before me said, it's, it is possible to walk on the grass, but there are lots of people who use bicycles, who take their kids out in perambulators, who would like to be able to take a, a wagon down to the beach or over to the park, and none of that is possible if you're just using somebody's grass. So we really do need, if we're going to consider this to be a pedestrian friendly or a bicycle friendly zone, it really does need to actually be sort of set up that way. 
Um, and the other comment that I just wanted to make is um, one of the things that I found incredibly effective in terms of slowing the, my speed down when I come into downtown Shelburne is that blinking um, sign that says 25 miles an hour and lets us know how fast we're going. Um, and I think it's actually very easy to lose track of how fast you're going on Bay Road because there aren't a whole lot of things that sort of give you a sense of how fast you're going. Um, so a lot of the, the sort of speed demons that are coming from the car dealerships and things, there's probably nothing that can be done about them. But I do think that perhaps installing one or two of those blinking signs would actually be a great way of helping people to monitor their own speeds. And I think just being more aware of that is actually something that encourages people to slow down. Thank Thanks. you. Who, uh, Mark Gamble. Uh, Mark Gamble, chair of the uh, pedestrian paths and bike and path committee. Um, just 40,000 foot view. Um, right now, west of uh, Route 7, um, Shelburne has uh, two east-west corridors to, for um, for any biking and mostly walking as well. Three if you want to count Boswick. One of them, um, Harbor Road, great infrastructure that we built up in the last five, six, seven years, great sidewalks to the arbors. Um, and uh, Bay Road, uh, not so much. Uh, it's really not the network that we want. It's, it's not safe for bikers, it's not safe for walkers. Um, and the point is, um, it's such a great connection. I mean, people want to get to the Thai Hall. People want to get to the farm. People want to get to Bay Park. People want to get to the marina. And people do want to walk. I mean, this is the only access to water. Here we, we have a town on the water, unless you go to the farm or uh, the beach, which is not really walkable. This is one of the areas where you can walk close to the water. So I think it does attract people. So thanks. Thanks, Mark. All right, we have another 17 minutes, please. My name is Amy Gilman. I've lived in Shelburne since 1998. Um, during that time, part of the time I lived on Bay Road, currently live off of Harbor Road. A um, couple points I wanted to make. Um, the first is I, I encourage townspeople to not try to make every road in Shelburne a pedestrian friendly road. There's some places that just don't lend themselves to that. We're bordered by the water on one side, um, people's land on others, and I think that in the past, through the PATH um, committee, we've put a lot of money and thought into certain places. So at this point, I live off of Harbor Road. Sometimes I will walk to Shelburne Farms. Other times, or when my kids were younger, I would drive to Shelburne Farms. I had no problem with that. Um, the other point I wanted to make with, I believe part of this conversation is the stop signs that we're talking about. Yeah, if that's we'll a, be talking about that more later. But Okay, so um, I'll just say what my concerns are going forward is that um, I'm trying to understand how that would work in the winter time. We have, I believe, PVC pipes right now. I'm not sure how a plow gets through. I'm a little concerned with the stop and go, people sliding. Um, I've started to see the courtesy slide a little bit at the um, stop signs. We were all very civil when it started, and now that school's in session, um, I see people having, it's not about who got to the line first, it's about I've been in line, three cars, and I've been stopped and you pulled up. Um, so I'm a little concerned for safety in that respect, too. Um, yeah, I think that was mostly it. The, the only other piece of if we put more money and studies and that kind of work into it, um, I know we did that and our town contributed significantly to widening Spear Street. Uh, several years back, so there's a nice healthy shoulder there. Um, as a town's person and a taxpayer, I am rewarded all summer with um, people riding three or four wide, and once in a while I get a middle finger. Um, so I want to be sure that um, if we're going to put money into it, which I don't know that I support, we've done that. Um, I'm all about health and fitness. I support that. I just feel like some places don't lend themselves naturally to pedestrian traffic. Thank you. 
And I'll respond to you the PVC <laughs> thing later with the plow trucks, but okay. it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please. Hi, my name is Dave Mitchell, and I live right at the stop sign. I live right on Bay Road at, at the train trestle. Um, just a little bit about the stop signs. I have noticed uh, that the traffic does back up every day at 3 o'clock. Um, of course, we're all aware of that, that Sunday when Shelburne Farms and there was something going on down in town when the traffic actually, and I know there was a police report saying that it didn't back up as far as was said, but that traffic, I came off of Shelburne Road and the traffic was backed up 100 feet after Shelburne Road. I drove the whole uh, road that uh, day. On that Sunday. I actually called and let them know that. So you, you, seem, you seem a little sided now that you're, you're for the stop signs. Uh, I think you might want to stay until we get to item number 12. OK, all right. Well, I, I plan on doing that, too. Uh, another question I had was, um, are there any other options for this? Is this just a, as far as the corridor goes, is it just, a, is it going to go through or not go through? Are there, are, are there options to this? I, I haven't really heard. This is a meeting where people kind of are encouraged to voice their concerns, to bring up points they would like addressed. This is not a meeting where this board is considering alternatives. I don't even know what the, all the alternatives are. Okay. I don't think anyone here knows what all the alternatives are. All right. So we are inviting you to let your concerns be known, and that's why we're here. Okay. And, and one last question. How did, how did this originate? Where did this originate from? Was this, a, was this from the, a committee that came about to, f for the corridor or? You know, I'll, I'm going to ask Joe, do you know uh, where this originally came from? Yeah, this was part of uh, a grant program that we put money to or do studying. It's a 20% town match, I believe, and 80% is paid by the Regional Planning Commission to do these studies. And we applied for it and received it, and that's why we are doing it. Okay, thank you. So who's next? Hi. My name is Carolyn Brown, and I live on Bayfield Drive, um, which the only way we can get out of Bayfield Drive is to go down Bay Road, which is fine. But um, we spend a lot of time on Bay Road. And uh, I think it is, it's um, very, very unsafe. And, and I've had near accidents myself walking down that road. I don't like trampsing on other people's property, even if they say, you know, it's okay. Um, I'm just not comfortable with it. And um, so I have dove into the, the trees and the grass many times, avoiding a reckless driver. Um, there is really nowhere to go. So I, and I, you know, had kids grow up there, and I really feel that, um, it's an unsafe for kids to bike on that road. People coming down off the bus, especially at the top of Bay Road, where it meets Route 7, is very treacherous. Um, uh, and, you know, we m many times walk like a loop around. And that, that one stretch is, is really um, uh, treacherous. So I just wanted to voice that because Thank I can't you. believe there's never been an accident there. I, I, I've seen car accidents, but I don't, I'm surprised nobody's been hit, really. Thank you. Oh. Right, we have a few more minutes. Is there anyone else who would like to speak, please? I was hoping someone else would mention this. Uh, it's please uh, identify yourself. Yes, it's uh, Gillian Dorfman. Um, I live on your tape and drive. Um, <clears throat> um, the thing that hasn't been mentioned that I'm sort of concerned about is whether you have paths or not, 
Um, the actual access bridge over the, the river is a particularly tricky point if you're, if you're a, a pedestrian or cyclist. And you mentioned that there's going to be some guardrails going up there, but it would make more sense if the bridge is in a, a, a sorry state to, to actually have that dealt with before you sort of do sort of li uh, minor, minor uh, changes. Um, and the other, uh, it's not so much a, a, a recreational thing, but I'm, I am also concerned it came out in one of the, uh, you know, the meetings about the condition of the, the railroad bridge as well. So, you know, I, I, obviously that's not a part of the recreational thing, but it, it is concerning and I, I think it should be addressed because of the condition of it. Um, and just finally, the, uh, one, one sort of suggestion, and I don't know what you call them here, but I, uh, in England they call them sleeping policemen which is um, sort of a, uh, they have them in Burlington uh, where you're trying to slow traffic down and you actually have a, a sort of a, a, a berm within the road and I don't know whether that's something that could be considered at a certain points. Obviously cyclists going past wouldn't, <laughs> on the side of the road you wouldn't want that but, but uh, I don't know whether it would help slow down traffic. Thank you very much. I can tell you uh, in regard to the La Platte uh, River Bridge uh, I, I don't know if you're aware that was uh, an issue that the select board put on for a ballot item and there was a lot of misinformation that was put out and that ballot item was defeated in a, a close vote. I can tell you that we have an engineer on the uh, board here who can speak quite a bit and has spoken a bit about the very poor condition of that bridge and the very poor condition of the railway overpass, which your presentation spoke about uh, the railway being responsible for, I forgot the word you used, but what the contract also provides is there's a contract between the railway and the state that provides the railway is responsible for the maintenance of that bridge and there is a disagreement between the railway and the state as to what those words mean and uh, it puts the town in a very <coughs> difficult position. I can also tell you that we have a, I'm sure all of you know, we have a wonderful fire department here. And the fire department's been before this board at least three times in the last six months requesting the, uh, consideration that the town purchase a Quint, which is a ladder truck, costs about a million dollars. It's something they say we need. The ladder truck would not fit under that bridge. So for if there were a fire and we had a ladder truck and we got rid of two of our f current fire engines that are smaller and do fit under the bridge, and that fire truck would, uh, if it was for Shelburne School or the Waldorf School or Shelburne Farms or anyone living out there would have to go over the Harbor Road railroad tracks and if those tracks were closed then we would have a real situation. So these are other considerations when you mention that bridge that uh, make makes for some very difficult <coughs> decisions and people should be aware of it. Brian, why don't you step up? Hi, I'm Brian Precourt. Uh, we own a few properties on Bay Road, so I have two sort of contrary opinions, the bike path and the pedestrian path. Um, since I mean, it's maybe not fair, they are primary residence for us, so we're sort of in favor of putting a path down through there and we've actually given a right of way to the town on one of our pieces of property on the west side for that purpose. Uh, when it comes to the underpass and the stop signs and that, how that's helping the pedestrians, it may be helping the pedestrians, but I'd agree with Dave that it's impacting the homeowners around that area. Um, I, I live down there and I work down there quite a bit and um, the things you see people doing at those stop signs is crazy. Um, uh, the other day we saw a car, there was eight cars in line, eight, ten cars in line. He must have been in a hurry. He just blew by him and went around him, honking his horn the whole way, but, you know, he, he, he blew by him. The other thing is that I've noticed, and, and I know Paul has had some benefits, I guess, from being able to get out, but we've noticed the increase in sound um, because people are stopping. A lot of them are test driving cars. They kick it up when they take off those stop signs uh, coming out of there. That's one of the things we've noticed. So uh, hopefully the board takes that into consideration, the, the property owners right in that area. 
Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Okay, we're going to uh, be finishing up. Is there how many other people who want to speak? Are you the last one? Two? If you guys could, I'd appreciate it if you could do it in a minute each. That would be great. Okay, so, so uh, my name's Stephen Bayetti. I live on Bay Road. I'm four tenths of a mile from the bus. Um, I take the bus twice a week, and I feel safe. I walk on the shoulder. And I realize I'm competing with speeding traffic, so I have to be attentive. Uh, the problem is, is that the high speed traffic, it's fundamentally incompatible with safety, be it for a pedestrian, a bicyclist, or other autos that are observing the speed. We have difficulty getting out of our driveway due to this excess speed. Um, and I'll jump to the end. I'm, I do have a concern that for the residents that live there, if there's a desire to widen the road or add uh, sidewalks, um, <laughs> that uh, it would really infringe on uh, their front lawns. It would put them and move all the activity, the action, a lot closer to them, uh, and it'd be a, a quite a loss. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to finish up with you. Hi. Hi. Uh, I was going to wait, but I feel like I should speak now. My, so my father, Paul Adams, has lived at 602 Bay Road. Oh, what's your name? I'm sorry, I'm Ashley Adams. Hi. Paul Adams, my father, has been at 602 Bay Road for over 25 years, and I've worried about him the entire time in terms of pulling out of his driveway. He is right at that underpass, the little stucco house. And I, with the full benefit of hearing, am able to put my window down and listen for traffic. He, with severe hearing loss, is not able to do that. He didn't ask for the stop signs, but we are so grateful to have them. So I want to thank you for considering this and for considering a solution because it has been unsafe for decades and it does not feel like a livable community when you live right there at that uh, at that underpass so thank you thank very you very much, much. so does uh, <coughs> before we f finish this item does anyone on the board have anything they'd like to uh, add no. I, I just add to, to the Jillian's question about the La Platte River Bridge that when uh, when we do get to replace that bridge, that bridge will be wide and have walking ability on both sides and the lines of sight so you won't be down on one side trying to look over it, which you can't do as a pedestrian. So those things will be addressed as, as we, you know, uh, quote unquote, fix that issue that's there. And, um, you know, Gary's right that the bridge is in uh, a sorry state and we're going to have to do something about it sooner than later, so. So I want to, anyone else on the board? Uh, so I want to thank everyone uh, for coming. This was an opportunity for everyone to uh, voice any concerns you have. Uh, this does not stop your opportunity to voice your concerns. You can please reach out to the town manager or to any of us anytime. Let us know uh, what you're thinking, what you're in favor of, what you're concerned about, what you're not in favor of. I can tell you, I haven't made up my mind. I'm not even close to making up my mind. I'm looking for more evidence before making any type of determination. And then I'm only one of five. So uh, there'll be other opportunities for you, and we welcome you all of you to reach out to any of us. And did you have something you wanted? I just wanted to show folks the schedule if you want to come to future meetings. Um, so our next one's in October. <laughs> no, no, that's this one. That's this one. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm thinking about the Cubs game. <laughs> uh, so uh, in March, but you don't have to wait till March. You can pick up the phone. You can send an email. Joe Colangelo is, <coughs> is very responsive. He'll get back to you. Reach out to him. And we'll pass it on uh, to Jack and his uh, group. So thank you, everyone, uh, for coming. Thank you.